Hey there, welcome to the Jazz Piano School podcast, episode number 174. My name is Brendan Lowe. I am the creator and founder of Jazz Piano School. Now, before we dive into the education, I just want to tell you one quick thing, one quick announcement, and that is on Black Friday, the biggest shopping day of the year, right? A couple things are going to be happening. That's going to be November 29th. You should definitely mark your calendar right now. We always give the biggest deal, the best deal, the biggest discount into Jazz Piano School on this particular day. And it's gonna last for four days, from Black Friday all the way to Monday, Cyber Monday. And on the end of Cyber Monday, that's when we're gonna shut down. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but besides all the amazing information and education inside of Jazz Piano School, you'll get, plus the biggest amount of savings, okay? We're also gonna be releasing our brand new specialty course that comes with our Black Friday option. And that's gonna be on Christmas songs. And it's gonna be absolutely fantastic and different because of one reason. I'm actually going to teach you all of the tools that I'm using in my Christmas arrangement so that you have an understanding, okay? You have a depth of knowledge about exactly what I'm doing. Now, a lot of other courses and Christmas songs and stuff like that on YouTube, they just show you the arrangement, you get the notation, but you don't really understand what's happening, okay? That's how this course is gonna be completely different. I'm gonna give you all the tools, I'm gonna show you and teach you about everything I'm doing all the different styles, all the different reharms, even before we get to the arrangements. That way, when you're looking through the analyzations of the Christmas tunes that I'm playing, you're gonna understand exactly what I'm doing, you're gonna be able to implement all the tools into other Christmas songs that you wanna play, and any other tunes in general for that matter. So, mark your calendar, November 29th, Black Friday through Cyber Monday is gonna be our biggest discount savings and all access promotion into Jazz Piano School along with that Christmas course. All right, so glad I got that out of the way. Now, in this podcast episode, I'm gonna be going over the five different registers that you should definitely have an understanding about and exactly what happens in each one of those registers when playing jazz piano. It's fantastic, so let's dive right in. I want you to think about the piano as being divided into five different sections, all right? So, I'm gonna name them off here. We have the low end section. And I, you know, a lot of this, you're not even going to be able to see on the camera because it's so low, right? But this is the lowest note on the piano, this A down here, okay? Now, up until about, I'd say this G, B, between here to here, that's just going to be the low end of the piano. Now, let me list them all off first. From here to about here or here. Now there's not really a specific note because they kind of overlap. The areas overlap each other. If you can kind of picture this, there's a little bit of overlap here, right? From the um, the next register I'm showing you. So from about, like I said, here to here-ish, this is gonna be known as low middle. Now these aren't like general terms. Like you can't go into the piano world and be like, oh, the low middle re register. Th this is what I've deemed for you how to break these up, okay? Low middle. Now for middle, we essentially have, again, from G to about C. Again, the overlap is kind of like here to here, here to here-ish. Here's where the overlap is happening. That's just gonna be the middle, the middle portion of the piano. From about here to like here or here, any anywhere in here, <laughs> right in this general vicinity. Not so much here, not here, but right here. Tommy boy, anyone, Tommy boy, okay. So that's gonna be our middle high. And then clearly from here on up, all the way up, right? That's all high register. So we got five different areas. Low, we got low middle, right? We got middle, we got middle high, and we got high, okay? So what is each one of these registers used for in jazz? And what are the textures and atmospheres associated with each one of these registers? Let's start with the very low end, the bottom end. Now, if you can imagine, the low end is gonna be used for rich, lush sounds. There's so much support from the low end because of the bass notes. Now again, some of the students I analyze, when they're walking bass, it's like here. Right? That's not really the bass section you should be using. It's too high. 
and so many people disregard the low end area of the piano, right? Your bass should be low, the low end, right? Now, if I'm walking in the key of B flat, I can go all the way down to the lowest C on the piano. Right, you hear the difference between that? It's such a huge, huge difference. And again, you know, along with that comping, okay, if you're comping and again, like walking bass or something, but let's say you're just comping or you're playing chords and not to get into this, but let's say you're using bass notes while you're comping. And that's a strategy that I teach, right? That, again, is a very thin sound. Now, if I shift everything down into the low and low middle register, right? My right hand is gonna be in the low middle register. My left hand is gonna be the low, very low end, okay? the thickness and like the the power behind that that's what the low end is meant for and used for so your low end is going to be mainly just bass notes and octaves or fifths right to really kind of give stability to your harmonies if i'm doing a pedal or something you know if i'm just pedaling on f You know, I'm just kind of playing on that octave down there and it creates this amazing, amazing sound, right? To do that in any sort of kind of progression. Like it's such a great, powerful tool down there, okay? Now, obviously you'll notice my right hand is comping uh, not in the middle register here, right? Now there is situational areas or basis I guess that I might do that but for the most part I'm staying in the low to middle register when my left hand's walking bass playing octaves or fifths to create a very low end supportive accompaniment sound that has more power more drive to a solo to anything I'm kind of accompanying for even if I'm playing solo piano my right hand's going to be here my left hand's going to be in the low end area of the piano all right that's what the low end's for now Let's get into the middle low, okay? And again, that's gonna be like here to here, again, to this area-ish, right? Now, this is also can be used for bass, but again, as you can see, it's gonna have a slightly um, less thick sound. It's gonna be still low, but it, it cuts through just a hair more, okay? So if you want your harmonies to cut through a little bit like this is, that that's rich, right? This is still rich, but it's got like a, it's not as, you know, it, it, it's got more smoothness to it, more, more elegance, right? Right, you hear that, the difference? Okay, so you can still use those strategies and principles, but again, this specific area right here can be used for that strategy that I was just talking about. The other amazing part about this area here is gonna be for solo piano purposes. Now this area can be used for bass notes. So if I'm walking, or if I'm playing a two feel, definitely can be used for bass notes, okay? It can also be used for great, amazing, rich two-hand voicings. Now, going down into the low end, we can't use things like one and seven down here. That's way too low for a one and seven. So if I use one and seven here, 
This works out perfectly. And then I can start to build my two hand voicings, okay, which we teach in jazz piano school, up from here. This is a component of our two hand voicing building system, right? This, right? Okay, or even this. Right, all this area here is my left hand playing two hand voicing building components. And for all the people who aren't aware of this in jazz piano school, that's gonna be your bass notes, your one and seven, your one and threes, and your one, seven and threes. Okay, those are the components to two hand voicing building system, right? So this area here is fantastic for that. Okay, you hear the, you hear the, it's still got the low end components, but at the same time, it's giving us a little, not as that lo, huge low elephant low end, right? And again, I can, I can play all sorts of things here. Right? So again, all low end. Now again, that's what my left hand is four. Now my right hand, while I'm using these, is more up here in this this middle or middle to high register. I'm not really getting into the middle to high. There's a little bit of overlap, but still, it's kind of all in this area in the middle register. So that's what our low, our middle to low, is going to be used for. It's going to be used for our right hand comping when our left hand's in the low low end, right down here, or it's going to be used for our left hand uh, solo piano components, or excuse me, two hand voicing components. Uh, when we're playing solo piano or when we're accompanying and we want to use some bigger spreads maybe in a ballad right okay especially when when accompanying any sort of soloist you know any sort of instrument singer this is a great area to stay in um, when you're playing with a trio you're not going to be you don't want to try and you know in some instances you will you can play in the low end register to kind of give more power to the bass but a lot of times I might be comping here. Right? So just in this area, I'm kind of comping for the instrumentalist and soloist who's probably playing in the middle or middle to high register. So I'm staying below them, right? So, uh, you know, that's what that register is going to be used for. Now, let's shift to the middle register. So the middle register, right, which is about here to here, is going to be used primarily for left hand voicings and right hand melodies okay and sort of improvisation of any any kind and drop two voicings we don't have any bass notes really happening in the middle to middle high register rarely ever i mean unless you're putting it into a left hand voicing like you're using uh an inversion so if i'm playing a d minor first inversion i have the bass note here but it's still it's more of a left hand voicing so if i'm soloing So there's my bass note there. I'm not really using this though to create a low end based voicing, putting my bass note on the bottom and doing something like this, right? That's too high. Okay, we need to be down in the lower end to do that. So again, this is gonna be used for all rootless voicings here. If I'm soloing or if I'm playing a trio, uh, trio tune and I'm playing a melody, you know? Anything like that, okay? My rootless voicings are here, my melody's here. Now, the other type of uh, thing that's gonna be used for the middle register is drop two voicing. So if I'm comping, this register is great for comping and using, utilizing drop two voicings, okay? This is essentially where they should be. This is too low down here. Um, this right here, this is, this is, again, we're, we, we went into the overlap section here, but then we're getting more into the middle section here. You see that? So we can utilize some drop two voicings here. And we can also use them here for a, high, a nice high sound, right? Now I didn't get into that register yet, but. Okay, so all your drop two voicings, melody, 
improv left hand rootless voicing should be in this middle register here okay again you want to stay away from the left hand bass note building up voicings all right when you're playing solo piano you shouldn't just be playing here in the middle register right you should be utilizing the middle low end to build your voicings in the very low end if you're just staying here you're not utilizing the registers of the piano properly all right let's go to the middle high again this can also be used for drop two voicings okay and they sound great up there but I would recommend you use this area now as we start to get into the higher registers from the middle and up this is going to be more flourishes it's going to be more um, embellishments flourishes right um, and any sort of kind of that like high end thin texture you really need to understand that all this all this stuff is thin right so if you're kind of going for a more like Disney sparkly magical feel <laughs> this is what this middle to high register is going to be for okay so again if I'm soloing I'm definitely using um, you know my solos up here but my left hand rootless voicings are probably staying in the middle register I'm not moving my left hand rootless voicings up this high again unless I'm trying to go for some certain feel like a, a magical sort of thin high very light airy sort of feel right um, right more of like a there you go so that sort of texture or airiness it's an embellishment it, this 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 register in the mid to highs for creating atmospheres and textures and colors you know that are light and flowy and and kind of just moving over everything it's not for that low end support it's not for the bottom end comping or supportiveness right this is where when you want things to cut out and cut through the music okay like you're going to be heard very well in this register so again drop twos improv all happening in this register now the very high register this is a, it just it 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 um it goes even more it further like it's it's times 10 so everything I just said about the mid to high it's times 10 now I'm not I probably would barely ever use drop any sort of two hand voicings up in the high register I'm using octaves I'm using embellishments right I'm using improvisation up here um, another great uh, area or thing or strategy is comping with octaves up here and having your left hand voicings down here right you hear this kind of texture all the time um, you know uh, if you're doing more of the Errol Garner you know that kind of stuff that's gonna be all mid to high and high register but for the most part right kind of making up stuff but that that high register there is again it's going to cut through it's going to be for elegance beauty and single note things unless you're doing that kind of octave or like thirds you know you don't want a lot of thick a lot of notes up here well I shouldn't say that I shouldn't say that because I, I like using like stuff like this But just realize that the texture is thin. It's for beauty. It's for really detailed, intricate, elegant sounds and feelings and moods. That's so far different from this powerful low end, right? Like that's a completely different feeling than this, right? If I did that up here, I mean, you know, obviously it, <laughs> it sounds it sounds weird okay so those are the five different registers and hopefully knowing this will really give you a great idea of where things occur when playing jazz piano because so many times no one even knows now my solo piano is occurring everywhere 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 <laughs> I don't know why it came out like that that was funny everywhere all right so I have my low end bass notes sometimes I'm playing here sometimes I'm playing up here for flourishes when I'm playing solo piano and all the pros everything is happening everywhere 
if you're if you're a very good musician. Um, accompaniment is usually happening in this area unless we're playing ballads or some sort of where I'm kind of adding flourishes. You know, if it's just me and a singer or me and a, uh, you know, where I need to do everything, then it's you, I'm staying down here and then adding some flourishes up here. If I'm playing with a trio, right, then I can move off. I can do things like this. I can do things like this, depending upon the ballad. Again, the style, guys, really kind of adds into this because we're playing um, a ballad. I get to create lush voicings here, right? You know, and all that kind of, sorry about that, all that kind of... Uh, stuff that goes into that okay and again the low end for all those low end rich bass notes so i hope you guys enjoyed that hope you learned a lot i'll see you in the next episode all right well i hope you guys enjoyed that hopefully that cleared up some questions about how to use all 88 keys and what exactly to do in each register now remember mark your calendars november 29th at 6 a.m you're going to get an email about our biggest savings discount all access jazz piano school and Bundled with that, our brand new specialty course, Christmas course, okay? That's gonna be sent out through an email. So definitely go ahead and get on our email list to get updates about that. I'm telling you, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. You don't wanna miss this, all right? If you guys have any questions, please let us know at any time. And don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com to check out all of our other free education and hit subscribe below to get our free podcast every Wednesday and our free lick of the week every Monday. All right, thanks so much, guys. Have a fantastic day, and as always, Happy practicing.